obviously we had Coastal uh, outmanned, outsized, and so forth, and uh, really proud. I guys really played well too. And uh, I didn't know it was going to end up like this. I didn't know we'd have 42 at half, but uh, uh, we scored about every time. Messed up once, and, uh, and our defense played very well. Also, kept getting the ball back. I was figuring out why we had trouble with Wofford. They usually have about a seven-minute drive every time they touch it. And, and Steve, uh, just uh, how pleasing was it for you to see the offense, you know, really work the flow and, and to get everybody in to kind of present some Yeah, it's, it's, well, uh, you need a game like this. Usually you have it early in the season. Uh, big SEC schools have a game like this. I was telling Glenn afterwards, this is where you run up your stats. And uh, we very seldom have a game like this. I think this is the first one since Troy of 09 or 10. 10. 10. Oh, it's in 10. Okay. Uh, Troy's the last time we were able to empty the bench, get everybody in, and uh, let everybody catch a pass, run, run the ball, and so forth. Uh, Potter, Potter had a couple of nice catches, uh, runs uh, late in the game there. Walk on player that these uh, kids really hustle, give us a good pitcher to practice every day, and for them to run the ball, catch pass, uh, at Williams Bryce in front of the big crowd, uh, that's, that's fun and rewarding for them. So it was neat to, that we could do this today. Right. Yeah. Steve, you mentioned winning your conference championship. Obviously, the first place in the East, and we're still alive for that. What are your chances, or what are your plans tonight, say around 745? My plans tonight are to go watch Hammond High School play. My grandson <laughs> Davis is uh, on that team, uh, quarterback, punter, and I think they're playing for the state championship tonight over at Benedict College. So I'm going to go watch uh, most of that one, I think, and uh, probably get home around 9 o'clock. See who won all the ball games throughout the course of the day. You know, if you watch the highlight show, you can see every big play. You don't have to watch the whole game, right, Charlie? So I like watching this. You know, when the highlights come on, you've, uh, you've seen how the, the game occurred almost. I'm going to watch it. I'll give you a call if you want me to. What good is it going to be? Two guys I wanted to ask you. Two guys I wanted to ask you about today: uh, Brandon Wiles mm -hmm. and then Pharaoh Cooper, also. Yeah, Pharaoh, when he uh, busts that one uh, up the middle, and, and you know he sort of high step away from the guys diving at our ankles and feet. And I told Edward Sands, I said, you need to tell all those running backs and some of your receivers too to learn to jump out of those guys diving at your ankles. We, we've had a lot of guys that that last guy that gets us by the you know the swipe of the legs and so forth. Yeah, Pharaoh's a ball player. We we know that, and he needs to run it. You know, three or four times a game, catch a few passes. Oh, that catch was a, a, a nice catch uh, in the end zone. I thought Dylan might have over, overshot him a bit, but uh, he ran it down and, and made a good play. Yeah, yeah Pharaoh was, was obviously a, a, a talent. Brandon Wild. Yeah, Brandon had a good game. Good to see him back in there. He's a big back that could knock that pile backwards. Uh, so he could be instrument, instrumental in the next two or three ball games. Very instrumental. He runs that zone read and off tackle plays very well. So it was good to see uh, Brandon have a good game. If we are fortunate, if Missouri does falter and we win, it's because of scheduling. We all know that. We had to get the two bottom teams on the West this year, Mississippi State and Arkansas. Just had to get them. And uh, I, I see Georgia got uh, LSU and Auburn. So they, they had the bad end this year. We had the bad ends, but that's just the way we do it. Um, Texas uh, A&M played eight of their first ten games at home, and their four out-of-conference games, I can remember them, El Paso, SMU, uh, Rice, and Sam Houston State. So, I mean, you're obviously going to run your stats up. You're going to have a pretty good record. Uh, of course, they're on the road against LSU tonight. Steve, you said this week it seemed like Connor played better than he did, but Dylan did yeah. play. Uh, based on, uh, it looks like your theory held up today, so what's going to be your approach next week for Clemson? I just noticed they were both 8 of 11. Did y'all know that? Uh, 8 of 11. Four yards. Uh, probably the same. Yeah, probably say Dylan's going to play somewhere in there. In fact, uh, uh, Dylan was all set to go in that third possession. And uh, I said, wait a minute, Dylan, let, let Connor go in. We've got that turnover down on the what, about five, six yard line, then got a penalty back to the 25. And uh, I said, let's, let's let Connor hopefully go get that third touchdown, and then you go to the next one. 
which is uh, which is what we did.